And a great opportunity to talk here, Ravind Optical Center, robotics, it's just mind-boggling where the technology is going. But our talk here is almost at the other end of the spectrum. It's an extremely simple idea, but we hope you will take away that even people individually can sit and dream of ideas and use the power of mobility and cloud technology and make a difference. I hope that's uh, the message that comes across. I'll start the story about a, a story about two brothers. The older boy on the right of your screen was born near Boston. His parents, like new parents do, fretted about every little thing. They had Harvard Medical School nearby, they had Mass General nearby, there was Dana-Farber nearby. Every possible, the best medical care. If you look, Boston has the top number one in pediatrics in every single category almost. And they had everything at their fingertips. They can just go anywhere, anytime, little thing. They fell off the weight height chart. They're rushing to Tufts. They're falling off a little bit here. They're going to the emergency center. And they just took that for granted. Now let's fast forward seven years. And the other little boy is born in the hearts of the same parents. Uh, adoption agency just sends them a letter saying, you have a little boy, a brother for your older child. But he was born many, many, many miles away in the foothills of the Western Ghats uh, in a little place run by the St. Jude's Charity. It's, the place is right out of an incredible India poster. It's rubber plantations, tea gardens, it's just fantastic. But there's a downside to this beautiful place. It's not even close to any large city. It's hundreds of miles from the biggest city, which is Kochi, which is, doesn't probably have the best of hospital that Boston can compare with. So you can imagine what the parents are doing. They're just running, going bonkers, because here is, they have all the best care in one hand, and here is the other child, they don't have access to his records. If something, God forbid, happens, there's not an emergency room within 200 miles. And that's the disparity that really started us to think about it. And what we concluded was this, this lottery of life where you're born, the state in which you are, should not determine to this large an extent the level of care that you get. You have such fantastic app users of application at one end available to a certain class of people and there's nothing available to another class of people. And we said, there's something that should be done to bridge this gap. So we started talking to old age homes, orphanages, shelters, and we started understanding what their needs are. They really work on shoestring budgets. They have very little money to go around. On top of that, because of the financial constraints, they're usually built far away from a large city. Because you can't just afford a big center for an old age home in a large city, it's just too expensive. So they're built in the outskirts. So the double whammy is you're short on cash. Secondly, you have no access to healthcare. So you're in a really bad position there in this philanthropic uh, area. On top of that, because of the lack of money, you have to optimize. You have to provide good health care at the lowest possible cost. I'm preaching to the choir in this room. You guys are all, if you take the cost of care and the complexity of the care, on the top right corner is the emergency room. Extremely expensive to have an emergency room. ICU stays, hospital stays, very expensive. Even a doctor visit for some people is expensive. And what you want to do is care for people in the bottom left corner, which is, somebody mentioned the term, care for the well. Don't care for the sick. Care for the well in the bottom left corner. Catch things early. 
How do you do that if you make it expensive, you procrastinate or not procrastinate, you don't have the money to go to a doctor, you don't want to go to a medical facility because say, oh is it, I'm going to put bread on the table or am I going to go to the hospital, you put it off. Make it simple, make it easy to ask questions, ask for advice early and solve the problem before it becomes a real big deal. How do you do that? We started talking to doctors like you all. I'm not a doctor, I'm an engineer. We said all our network of friends and relatives and we started talking to them and asking for advice. Like, How do I bridge this gap? And they said, we would all love to help. But they're all very busy. They're all over the place. They have a few minutes to spare a day. I said, do you check your Facebook? Yes, absolutely. Do you read your emails every day at the end of the day? Yes, absolutely. Would you be able to spend 15 minutes of your day and help us out a little bit? Sure. Some of them run clinics and camps and volunteer their time. But what we need is not a week of help here and a week of help there. We need help every day. But these are people all over the world and I could recruit many more. But we need your help every day. And so we had to come up with an idea which is simple which would bridge these two sides. There are people, kids in orphanages and shelters, runaway kids from shelters, old people in homes, needies, people who need the care and there are doctors who have the desire to help but they're extremely busy people, they don't have the time to visit. Even if they did visit, it would be a week here and a week there. That doesn't solve the problem. So we came up with this idea of the cloud clinic, which is extremely simple and I'll explain to you to bridge these two areas. A little plug for Seattle there, that's a TV show, they're not real doctors. <laughs> Being engineers, we just uh, dove into this problem. Free software, let's get a Linux box, get some Apache software, get some MySQL database and off there we were programming away a little system. We said, simple, we can put it together. But as you heard from the last talk and other talks, it's security is a huge deal. If you have multiple facilities, you have to isolate their data. You have to provide different kinds of roles. The caregiver has a different role. The administrator has a different role. The doctor has a different role. If a parent wants to access data for a particular child at an orphanage, that's a different role. So you have role-based access. There are other complexities like you have to provide mobile care, otherwise it's not going to be easy to use. You have to provide email-based access, you have to provide photo uploads, audio file uploads. As we started building, we realized this is not as simple as it looks. And that's why you heard from the other talks, there are large systems being put together, there are big companies, Dells and Oracles and IBMs are all in this area trying to make here, there's two people sitting there trying to program away. You're not going to be able to solve this problem. So what we tried to look at the parallels and we said, this looks so similar to an issue tracking, cloud-based issue tracking system. Why not just take an off-the-shelf cloud-based issue tracking system and just modify it and use it in this space? And that's what we did. We took a straightforward cloud-based issue tracking system and created roles, created workflows and forms and used it. And it has access through email, it has access on the smartphone and tablets and there we had our, we created workflows and you can create any workflow you want. You can add new states, you open an issue, when the doctor picks it up it goes under review, they can ask for a second opinion, if they ask for a test, it goes into a waiting for test state. That's not the important thing. The important thing is you can easily create new states, new transitions and create workflows. Straightforward. Oops, sorry. You have a website, you can go in, you can look at issues, you can see the priorities, you can see the descriptions, you can see uploads of pictures. And it's very straightforward. It's a very free-form, text-based system. You don't have to do anything fancy. On the other end, the doctors are busy. They sit and plop down at, in front of their TV at the end of the day. They open up their phone. 
they can check if there are any open issues. So they open up their phone and check saying, ah, there's one open issue there, there's a few monitoring, they can check all that on their iPhone or their smartphone sitting in, in front of the TV, don't have to go anywhere, spend 15 minutes of their day doing that. They, I don't know if you can read it, but they can just pull the action, look at the issue, and just write sitting there in their phone, assign it to themselves, because they say, oh, yeah, this is the issue I like to work on, they can pick it, or they can assign it to another person right from their phone sitting in. This work is just in its infancy. We have started on this trip itself. We are recruiting uh, several places where they have agreed to use this system. So we are in the really early stage of starting the trials. We are doing some amount of fundraising because we realize that even if it's a cloud-based system and we are getting free service from the cloud-based services because it's a non-profit, but still there's cost involved. We want to provide them more with mobile equipment like the kinds of things you saw to make it very easy to upload the data. And on top of that, you still need the, the person to actually train the caregivers. I think that's still an important threshold. The system is still in English. Fortunately, in India, where we are trying to use it, most people are familiar. It still requires the internet, which some of the facilities where we are starting, they do have internet. But because of the email capability, and we're working with another organization at the University of Seattle, my son was a co-author on this, uh, we can do collection of the data on the smartphone offline, and then when you get into coverage, it'll upload into Cloud Clinic. The other end is we will have to grow our network of doctors, but there I'm thinking of the Wikipedia model where they have a core set of editors and then they gradually go. This is much more serious. We will grow it in a much more controlled fashion as the need grows of growing the doctor volunteers. The other end is engaging hospitals with corporate giving programs. When you catch the problem early, but you will detect some of the difficult cases that need to be brought to the cities and uh, a hospital for helping out. As we build this system, we will have to analyze and learn the data that we collect, and we hope that we will understand the issues and move forward from there. Closing the loop, the same two kids that you saw in the first slide, they're all grown up. They were part of this, building the system together. That is the power today in cloud computing and mobile computing. People can sit in their dorm rooms and put together a system, which if you really have the willpower to try and do it, you can empower caregivers and enable doctors all over the world. You don't have to be in the same place and make a difference. And we are calling this micro-volunteering. You don't have to spend a week. You don't have to spend a day. Give us 15 minutes of your time every day. Micro-volunteer and make this project a success. Thank you.